है गाइस एंड वेलकम बैक टू द सेकंड पार्ट ऑफ आवर फॉलोइंग स्काइस ट्यूटोरियल सो इन टुडेस वीडियो वी विल बी बेसिकली कंटिन्यूइंग फ्रॉम द पॉइंट वेयर वी हैड स्टॉप्ड सो इफ आई जस्ट रन दिस प्रोग्राम यू विल सी हाउ मच वी हैड मैनेज टू गेट डन इन द लास्ट वीडियो व्हिच वाज बेसिकली जस्ट सम बेसिक प्ले अ मूवमेंट कोड दैट वी हैड रिटन वी हैड नॉट रियली uh done a lot of stuff so as you can see over here we have our old man who can move and yeah and obviously his position was dynamically adjusted to the width and height of the screen so even if i change the dimensions it will uh, adjust itself so in this video we will be doing the boundary checking and enemies and we'll also implement collision we won't create multiple enemies in this video we will do it in uh, some of the other video like uh, some of the uh, later videos of the tutorial but in this video we'll just create one of them so first of all let's actually get done with a boundary checking so i'm just going to be creating a comment boundary checking so all i will say is just say if layer x is less than 0 actually i will just set that as less than or equal to 0 then i will just set my player x oops player x to 0 so that's just what this line does is it's i, I like it's pretty self explanatory that if the x coordinate of the player becomes less than or equal to 0 uh, the, the way the pi game coordinate system works is that the top left corner of the screen is 0 0 and as you go to the top and right it increases in the x position and as you go down it increases in the y position so the bottom right corner is maxed out like in uh, the coordinates it will be uh, like if you have a 100 by 100 screen uh, the bottom right corner of the screen will be 100 100 and this will be 0 0 so i think you got it So if it's at uh, the player x is zero zero, then you want to set it at zero, uh, so it does not go out of the screen. But now we have to keep it for the right bound. So now what we do is we just say player x becomes greater than or equal to uh, the width minus. Uh, now we know that the player width is sixty four, but if we give it a dimension of sixty four, it will be good. But there is a chance it might go a little bit out of screen. So we'll just give it something like sixty-seven. It's kind of arbitrary, uh, but you know we will see if it works. So we can just say with minus sixty-seven. Uh, hit Control Command S, and now let's just run the program and see if it works. So uh, as you can see, it is running the program. Uh, it's taking a second. All right, there we go. So now, if I just go right, as you can see, it stops my player. And if I just go left, now my speed is kind of slow. So let me just increase my speed. So let me just go up. Oops, actually down. So we will just make this three, three. Now, if you are on Windows, you probably will make it zero point three or something like that. The reason is that uh, MacBooks do not allocate any like external speed to uh, Pi game or actual like programs like game related programs. So uh, you will have to create like a really high speed on a Mac, but a really low speed on Windows. you could like create a platform independent speed also but that's kind of complicated and i don't even i don't like fully know how to implement that so i am going to refrain from talking about it but there's this thing called delta time which if you add it will kind of make it so that it will adjust the speed uh, based on your operating system uh, so yeah that's kind of cool so as you can see uh, we can move right and left and we also have some boundary collisions in place so now let's actually go ahead and create the enemy so for that first of all i will open up google chrome and get myself a good looking enemy image so we will just open up google chrome and i will just get myself a basic enemy image not something too complicated like i could create my own one using gimp or photoshop or something like that but i am 
you know i don't know how to do that so i'll just search for flat icon which is the uh, website i usually use for my icon related stuff because uh, i saw it some like i saw a few people use it and so i just use this one so now let's just search for um let's just search for a lion uh, i know it's not very practical but i think i'm just gonna use a lion so let's just use uh, uh let's just use this one as our lion <coughs> And I will just download the 64 by 64 pixel version. Uh, we will just download the free download. We don't really need the premium one. So for some reason, I don't know, it's taking some time. Uh, that's actually because I'm recording and my recording software like OBS is really heavyweight. Uh, so that's why that's one of the reasons. Uh, my uh, So that's I think one of the reasons why my Chrome isn't responding that well. Uh, where is that okay there we go uh, I'm just gonna go desktop um, Python falling skies and we will just add lion.png uh, so you will find the updated github repository also but actually this since I've already kind of like showed you to find an image I am not really gonna update it right now but still I think I will add it just in case if you need it so now let's actually load in the enemy player so making the enemy so we can just say enemy img is equals to pi game oops pi game dot image dot load we can load in our uh, lion dot png image so i'll just say lion dot png and let me just close that thing and then we can just say oops enemy x so the enemy x will obviously be a random position so we will just say import random uh, so we can now give it a random position so we can spawn the uh, enemy at a random position so we can just say enemy x is equal to random dot rand int so uh it will generate what random dot random does i'm pretty sure you would be knowing it but still if you just in case you don't know it will just generate a random integer from like two points that we specify so in this case the random integer will be specified from um uh, what do you say uh it will be from width minus width uh to with uh, minus 60 actually let's go 70 uh, and this will just go plus 70 so what the state is zero actually you know what i think i'm just gonna say zero to zero to 70 and i think i can just hard code 70 but we will need to hard code, won't need to hard code this one so from 70 to width minus 70 again the reason why we are choosing 70 is because we don't want the enemy to be spawning uh, like half outside of the screen and we don't want all of those weird things to happen so that's why so now i will specify the enemy y which will be a random dot rand int uh, now we won't have some tremendous variations in the enemy height since if we really add those like uh, we will add like some good variations when we actually create multiple enemies but for the time being we will not really add a lot of variations because if we do uh, then uh, it will take like a lot of time for the enemy to spawn and it can lead to some weird stuff for now so we will do that but in the later tutorial so for now i'm just gonna give it a random dot random of height plus uh, 100 to height plus 200 not a whole lot of like varying like just a hundred points uh, i'm sorry 100 pixels but you know it's still there and then we just need to give it an enemy y change since obviously the enemy is not gonna change in its x position uh, we just need to alter this variable so we just need to give it this thing enemy y change 
and the enemy y change will just be basically equal to the player x change over here uh, so it's minus 3 so i think i'm just gonna set the enemy y change to minus 3.5 and actually this will be plus 3.5 not minus since minus means it will go up and we don't want that so then we can simply just say enemy y plus equals enemy y underscore change now we actually need to blit the enemy since currently we have only loaded in the enemy to this code but we haven't really drawn him to the screen like the way we have done the player so we just say define enemy x comma y we basically do the same thing that we did for the player just swapping the name of the variable of the image uh, we can just say enemy img at the x and y positions and we can just copy the name enemy and i will simply paste it over here with enemy x comma enemy y all right so let's just run this program and see if this works i'm pretty sure it will um, come down come down all right seems like the enemy is not coming down all right so let's actually see if this is working enemy y change 3.5 all right let's actually print the enemy y and see if it's actually changing or not so print enemy y let's just print that out all right it is increasing surely hmm okay i just got my mistake so height plus a hundred well if you look at it the height is at zero so at 700 plus 100 it will obviously be 800 so this has to be supposed to be zero minus a hundred to zero minus two hundred this so now if i just run this okay i obviously need to get rid of these things let's just do it like this Okay, what is the problem? Empty rand. Okay, which line? Hmm. Line number 32. Um, okay, so we need to get rid of something over here. Okay, I think we don't need these spaces. Let's see. Okay, I just got my mistake. I just got my mistake. Uh, minus 200 is obviously smaller than 100. So, that was quite dumb of me. Uh, I don't know why I added minus 100 before. So, that was pretty stupid. But I kind of like I make that one mistake like all the time. Whenever I'm dealing with Pi game. Alright, and there we go. As you can see, the Y coordinate is increasing and we do have an enemy. Obviously, currently nothing happens. The enemy just falls and as you can see, the coordinates are increasing. So now all we can do is we can just get rid of the enemy sprint statement. And now we can actually implement the border collisions for the enemy. So I'm just going to say for the player. And now let's just do it for the enemy. So uh, boundary checking for the enemy. It's pretty this is this will be pretty straightforward. So if enemy y is greater than or equal to height uh, plus uh, let's just go a hundred then all we need to do is I just need to copy this piece of code and paste it here and then I can just do that and let's just run this program and I'm sure it will work but let's just be we can't really be very sure so as you can see currently this is the enemy's position 
all right let's actually print it out just to be like very sure so i'm just gonna print out the layer x uh every iteration of the loop so we'll just print out player x every time we iterate over the loop so pretty so as you can see currently it's 386 in the x direction and what we want to see now is it, it change and obviously it has changed for some reason i don't know why this coordinate hasn't but the x coordinate did change so we know it's working whatever so let me just clear the screen over here all right so this is basically what we created today this was just like not super long i think it was as long as the last video in the next video what we will do actually you know what i actually have one last thing to do in this video is implement collisions between the player and the enemy so let's just do that and then we will call it a day so here i'll just need to import another module math uh, math will actually be kind of useful you can do this part without math module without the math module but uh, like you will need to multiply it by 0 0.05 and it will be a bit more hacky uh, using the math module it will you know look kind of robust so define is underscore collision and that will take in the player x player y the enemy enemy x and the enemy y and actually you know what i will actually need to call it is collision with enemy the reason why we are calling is collision with enemy is because uh, there will be a power up also uh, in like some of the later parts of this video so now we are going to be using a math formula uh, it's player x uh, minus the enemy x the whole squared uh, minus the player y minus enemy y the whole plus the player y minus enemy y the whole squared and the whole thing rooted so yeah uh, let me actually show it to you so that will be math dot s q r t math dot pow player x minus enemy x uh, by 2 plus uh, math dot pow uh, player oops player y minus enemy y the whole squared then all we can just say is if the distance is less than 27 which is just arbitrary value return true else we just want to return that there is no collision so we obviously want to return false so we can just say return false and there we go that's basically our collision system is collision with enemy and these are the parameters and what i'm just gonna do is basically copy this entire thing and go down and just say collisions uh, collisions uh, and player with enemy and i will just say collision one is equal to this and i can just say if there is a collision one i would just want to say break and i actually uh, we will do a bunch of stuff in there after like after some time uh, but yeah so currently i will also just say import time uh, you can also add music to the game i will show you how to do that also you know just on a side note and here i will just say time dot sleep we will just make it sleep for like 0 0.05 seconds uh, like not for a really long time kind of short but it's it, you know it kind of shows that the player has actually collided uh, with the enemy so yeah so let's actually run the code and see if it works or not all right and okay uh pow expected two arguments got one let's actually have a look at this thing all right match dot pow 
I think I get it. This has to be something like this, I guess. Uh, we need to enclose it in this. I think this should work now. I really do hope so. Um, I may have got the minus and the plus signs like kind of mixed up, but I'm pretty sure this is the case. All right, man, the square player x minus enemy x. Okay, what is the problem over here? I think we need to pass it in right here, maybe. I don't know. Let's see. All right, let's just do this. All right. Okay, I think that was the case. All right, there we go. It's actually working now. So yeah, we needed to pass it in over there. Uh, I didn't know that. I actually had forgotten it. So now you can also just go over here and just say print, uh, print, um, you lose and a few exclamation marks. So if I just run the program again and we go over here, if I just collide with, oops, I'm just too good at this game collide and this says you lose and it breaks out of the loop so yeah that's pretty much what i wanted to get done with today we wrote like a few lines of code today i think like 80 lines or something uh this will be a bit more long of a game like i think creating multiple enemies will be a pretty quick thing but it will actually require a ton of code refactoring uh but you know you will learn how to do that stuff also so that will be pretty good so yeah uh next creating multiple enemies is actually not gonna really be a huge challenge or something at least i hope so uh so yeah uh, and then like after multiple enemies i will also teach you how to create a score counter uh, uh power ups which i was saying since when and yeah we will create a couple of things like those uh this will be like your a really cool game which will be you know kind of proud to show uh I, like if you want you can also comment down below if you want me to show you how to convert this thing to an executable file so you can uh, distribute it among your friends and you know tell them if you want they can beat your high score i will you know i will also teach you how to create a high score counter uh where like what you will do is you will make use of the pickle module or the with open thing that will store a high store in your local storage like on this folder only uh, we we won't really go that crazy and like it will load it in again uh, on the start of the game and see if the high score has been beaten or not uh, pretty standard stuff uh, so yeah i hope that you enjoyed this video uh, it wasn't that long but well it's well it's